The conditions are crazy. It started last night with sleet and transitioned to freezing rain. Everything here is coated in ice, big time. The winds are super, super strong. I've been hearing trees and limbs come down. As it stands, my friends, it is four o'clock in the afternoon. The temperature is right at 38 degrees. And everyone, we have a big snowstorm coming in. I want to welcome you all to the channel. My name is Luke, just in case you don't know. This is a trip that I'm very, very excited about. And that's because of this. This is the very first big winter storm of the season. The first one. Unfortunately, here in the Southeast, this winter has been very lame. It's been very warm. We've had very little snow and ice, but that should change today, or I should say later on tonight. I'll tell you more about the storm here in just a little bit. For now, I need to go off trail and find a campsite. It's not bad. Relatively flat. Hmm. As you all have noticed, it's taken me a while to find the perfect campsite. The thing is this, when you're off trail, there is no such thing. I've been looking at the trees, looking at the landscape, this here is not perfect, but it's not bad either. I'm very well protected from falling limbs, and with this trip, that's going to be important. As far as the weather goes and what's coming our way, I'm not going to talk about it in any sort of detail. I'll just let you all see. Plus, whatever happens, happens. Anytime that I give out a forecast, it's always incorrect.
All right, folks, I got the tent set up. That took a few minutes. This is a very easy Hilleberg tent to set up. Four season, this thing is ready for some snowfall. All I have to do now is finish staking it out. With this trip, it's going to be cold enough that I shouldn't inflate this mat with my breath. I need to use an air pump. If I blow air into this from my lungs, I'm introducing moisture. That's going to lower the R value of this mat. Because of that fact, everyone, I'm going to use this air pump to inflate this mattress. Now my friends, I'm in good shape. The tent has been set up, the tarp's been set up. All we have to do is await some snow. With the tarp here, I set it up for basic protection and as a partial wind block. If the direction of the wind changes, I can change the tarp setup. But as it stands right now, the direction of the wind is this way. So it's hitting the back side of the tent, the back side of this tarp, and I'm protected here. Already it's getting dark, everyone. It'll be pitch black in about 20 minutes. I got a late start for this trip, a little bit later than I intended, but hey, that's how it goes sometimes, right? I heard a saying a few years ago that has stuck with me, do your best and forget the rest. Okay, <laughs> that worked until I sunk into the ground. Luckily everyone, I come prepared. What I'm going to use here is a ground sheet. I'll fold it in half and stick it underneath this stool. Ah, that is what I call perfection. <laughs> it's getting dark. I don't know if you all are like me, but I would say 75% of the time when I grab my headlamp, I put it on upside down. It is so silent, everyone. You could tell 
that like a weather system is coming in. The forest is quiet. Everything's hunkering down. No birds, no animals, no squirrels. It's silent. Now I have to decide what I'm going to eat. That's easier said than done because I have a ton of really good food with me. I have packed for multiple days. With a big storm system like what's coming in, you just never know. So, real termat, reindeer stew. It's a classic and it's amazing. My buddy Travis, says the fettuccine alfredo with chicken. This one's the best. So, you know what? Let's have it. All right. <laughs> you say it's the best, we'll see. Come here, you. It looks good. Talking about the weather that's coming in, as it stands right now, the difference between a little bit of snow and a ton of snow is just a few degrees. The question is with this storm, how cold is it going to be? One to two degrees will make a huge difference in this storm. As it stands right now, it's not really that cold and it's not really supposed to get that cold. I've seen crazy forecasts for like two feet of snow, I've seen very lame forecasts for like four inches of snow. I have no clue what's going to happen with this storm. Because of that, I had to plan this very carefully. I couldn't go out into a location that I couldn't escape from, that I couldn't get out of. If I go to the highest of elevations out in the middle of nowhere and two feet of snow drops on the ground, that could be a problem, right? Hiking 20 miles to get out, that could be an issue. I'm at a high elevation, but yet I'm not too terribly far away from the vehicle. Roughly four miles, something like that. All of that equated to a good balance. A good balance of elevation, temperature, distance from the vehicle, and at the same time, I have numerous escape plans. Let's say that this storm does something funky and it drops three feet of snow. I can get out of here if I need to. It would be a chore, but I have multiple escape routes. That is something that you truly need to consider when you go out for a storm trip. I believe fully in self-reliance. It's one thing to fall down and break my leg. It's something else completely to go out in the middle of nowhere, being unprepared and so on. It's kind of like this. Let's say that you go out for a backpacking adventure and you're wearing blue jeans and it begins raining, you get soaking wet, and then you have to call in a rescue. It's in my opinion that that individual should have to pay for that rescue. Here's a different situation. There's a hiker, falls, breaks his leg. That's purely an accident. There is a discussion there to be had because oftentimes when it comes to rescues, they're free. The party who has to be rescued doesn't have to pay for it. So yeah, I don't know. There's a fine line in there. I mentioned that it's not that cold and in truth it's not, but holding this feels amazing. I have to say, Travis, this smells incredibly good. It smells like it's heavy in garlic. Yep, dehydrated garlic. Here we go.
Travis, my friend, you are right. That is really, really good. Yeah, man. Thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate it. How awesome is that, folks? That owl is right around here somewhere. Owls are very inquisitive predators. <laughs> it came over here to see what's going on, I'm sure. Wow, that's awesome. Tell you what, folks, instead of talking, I'm just gonna sit here, listen to my owl friend here, and have dinner. Plus, you all don't wanna watch me eat anyway, so I'll bring you all back in just a bit. As you walk in here, the storm has arrived. Right now, it's a sleet storm. As I'm getting inside of my sleeping bag, I'm going to take my fuel canister and put it in here as well. That way I can keep it warm tonight and I can use it tomorrow with no problems. It's been a good evening, it's about 10 o'clock now. As far as the temp goes, it's right around freezing. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but definitely cold, windy, super, super windy. All there is to do now, everyone, hop inside of the tent, call it a night, and see what we awake to tomorrow. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This is going to be very, very interesting, folks. I'll see you all in the morning. Good night for now. Good morning, everyone. The time is about 6.30. The conditions are crazy. So, it started last night with sleet and transitioned to freezing rain, and it's been freezing raining like all night long. I mean, everything here is coated in ice, big time. Listen to this, okay? The winds are super, super strong. I've been hearing trees and limbs come down. Luckily, the location that I picked here is, it's safe, right? Nothing's 100% safe, but this is pretty damn safe. But, um, it's been interesting, I'll say that much. 
Talk about getting that forecast wrong, everyone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Two feet of snow, what the heck? I can't believe it. Yeah, I can. I can believe it. Okay, well, let's get up. Let's make some coffee and let's, I don't know, let's see what happens today. Check that out, everyone. Look at those icicles. This is why I didn't want to tell you all like what the forecast was. I don't know if you all know this or not, but every single cup of coffee that I've had on the channel for the last four or five years was sent in by you all. I cannot thank you all enough for your generosity. I really appreciate it. It's amazing. It is coffee time. Cheers, my friends, cheers. Cheers to the forest. I mean, check this out. This is a quarter inch thick. Maybe a little bit more than that, actually. That's impressive. So, cheers to the ice as well. <laughs> Here in a moment, we'll check the weather forecast and see what it says is going to happen for the rest of the day. My plan was to come out for a multi-day trip. All of the forecasts were incorrect. Some said one foot, some said two foot. We had storm chasers coming here into the mountains for this event. <laughs> I bet they're disappointed. If I knew that the ice storm was going to lay down a quarter inch of ice, I probably wouldn't have come out into it. Ice storms are dangerous. You really have to be careful. Come on, baby. All right. So it says, at 3,200 feet, it is 34 degrees. At this elevation, I don't know. It's impossible to say. I'm gonna say right around 33. I mean, it's melting, so yeah. Okay, sleep before 10, then rain, snow, and sleep between 10 and 11, then rain after 11. And then tonight, a chance of rain, snow, and sleep before nine, then a chance of snow between nine and midnight. Windy. Yeah, no kidding. Hmm. A winter storm warning is still in place. This forecast is completely different. Heavy wet snow expected and some ice. Total snow accumulations two to five inches with up to six to eight inches with elevations above 4,000 feet. Those are two very conflicting forecasts. Now this actually sounds pretty good. Rocky Mountain Scramble. 
Scrambled eggs, potatoes, cheddar cheese. Sounds perfect. A limitation that I have on this trip is water. I have just enough water for one overnight trip. My plan was to melt snow so I could have water that way. But if we have no snow, you know what I mean? I really don't want to melt this ice and that's because this stuff is covered in basically whatever it was sticking to. Little bits of wood, bark, and so on. This right here is the last of my water. amazing how much force this tarp is blocking at the moment. Inside of here, basically I'm not feeling any wind at all. You may have noticed that I took my ground sheet and I attached it to the bottom section of this tarp. That way I can have more protection. It's blocking more wind. I tell you what everyone, because we're talking about the tarp, let me tell you all this. I set this tarp up so it would block the wind that's going this direction. And because I set it up in this way, I knew that this tarp would be taking on a ton of force. That's why I've set this up with dual tent stakes for each of the guy line points, and I've also rock braced it. These two measures do a lot to ensure that your tarp stays put and that the tent stakes don't rip out of the ground. Before I have breakfast, I want to give some shout outs real quick. The first shout out is for Melvin. Thank you so much for the Puerto Rican coffee, the seasoning. I really appreciate it, buddy. Travis and Kimberly, thank you so much for the meals. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. So far, they are awesome. Rita, my friend, the painting that you sent Susie and I is beautiful. You are incredibly talented. We put it up on the wall. We are blown away. My father was actually at the house when we opened it, and he too was shocked. Like, I mean, it's really, really good. You are incredibly talented. Thank you so much. JC, thank you so much for the Death Wish coffee. When I have a Death Wish, I'll drink it. <laughs> Alan, thank you so much for sending a copy of your book. It looks really interesting. I'm looking forward to reading it. Next on the list is Jessica. Thank you so much for the pillow that you sent Susie. You absolutely made her day. No, you made her week. When she opened up the package and there's this like alpaca llama pillow, whatever was on it, like she was just pure smiles. I mean, she lit up. <laughs> it was fantastic. Thank you so much for doing that for her. I really appreciate it and Susie does too. Thank you so much. Lastly, everyone, I received a package that didn't have any names on it, no notes, but whoever sent in the mountain house meals and the coffee, and I believe there was some peak refuel meals in there as well. Whoever you are, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. A big thank you goes out to the individuals who send in packages, and also a big thank you goes out to you all. I really do appreciate all the kindness you all have shown me over the last 10 years. The emails, the messages, the letters, you all are incredible. And I never once thought for a second that I would be, I don't know, even in contact with so many people. Like every single day, Susie and I, we talk to hundreds, hundreds of people. And it's just incredible, it is. So, this cheers is for everyone. Cheers, my friends. Cheers. Gosh, it's windy. The hike out of here is going to be miserable. Initially, I was going to film it, but I don't know. It's too windy, too slick. <laughs> this trip is a mess, is it not? 
Okay, this is made in Boulder, Colorado. Backpacker's Pantry. Hmm. Talking about Colorado, I think it was in last year's adventure, like road trip adventure. We were in South Dakota, maybe. We were talking about, we might have actually been in Colorado at the time, but we were talking about how we were pretty much done with Colorado. That's not true. We've actually changed our mind. We will be going back to Colorado again this year. Many years ago, we went out to backpack Electric Pass in Colorado. The thing is this, as we were heading up the mountain, going up, up, and up in elevation, Susie began suffering from elevation sickness. So by the time we got up to the lake there, there's a lake and then you can go up to the pass. Susie was not feeling good at all. So she just laid down, she got some rest, got to feeling better, but it was too late in the afternoon to do electric pass. Electric pass is called that because of the frequent lightning storms, thunderstorms that take place in the area. So it was too much of a risk to go up there. I wanna say there was another obstacle blocking us from going up there. Maybe too much snow in the ground. It's been so long now, I don't really remember. But either way, that trip has stuck with Susie. She was unable to do electric pass and she wants to go back and conquer it. So I totally respect that. I mean, just because you fail at something doesn't mean that you don't do it again, that you don't try again. So this year we're going back to Colorado and we're going to conquer that mountain for Susie. Wow, this smells like biscuits and gravy. And that's freaking awesome. Except there's no biscuits in this, but we have eggs, gravy, cheddar cheese. Oh yeah. By the way, everyone, I apologize if I'm yelling. With the toboggan on and the sound of the wind, I could just barely hear myself talk. It's loud. Anyways, here we go. <clears throat> this is quite strong. There's a lot of black pepper in this. It's very powerful. It's good, but it's powerful. With that trip to Colorado where Susie wasn't feeling good, that was a very interesting trip. <laughs> we wanted to rent like a four x four something with high ground clearance because we wanted to do some trails around the area. So we go to the rental place to pick up our vehicle and the only thing they have was like an all-wheel drive Ford Flex, I think was the name of it. It was literally the ugliest vehicle I have ever seen. I was embarrassed to drive it. That thing was such a hunk. It looked like such crap. It was like two inches off of the ground. It was hilarious. <laughs> I took that thing <laughs> off-road to get to the Electric Pass parking lot. It was fun. So funny. <laughs> that was funny. That stuff is good, but it's got a kick to it with all that pepper. Woo! I'm burning. In a good way. In a good way. Cheers, everyone. I tell you what, folks, I'm going to finish up my breakfast and then come up with a plan. I may pack everything up and just head on out of here. <laughs> In my head for this adventure, I was expecting something grand, right? Feet of snow, building shelters, bunkers and whatnot. I was going to show you all some really cool things, but unfortunately that didn't pan out. But hey, that's how it goes. I'm not disappointed. These conditions, folks, 
They're wild. Super, super windy. It's raining again, huge drops. If this was to turn to snow, oh my gosh, it'd be so awesome. As you all can see, I fired up the solid fuel stove. I'm going to make a cup of coffee. It continues to be very windy, kind of rainy, more like misty, I guess. But so far, no snow. Now, the reason I'm firing up the solid fuel stove is because of this. Keeping the isobutane canister warm the entire time, that's not really feasible. After a while, it becomes a little much. That's why in the wintertime, I recommend having two ways to heat up water, make your food, and so on. There's a number of ways that you can go about doing this. Hexamine is a good option. Cheers everyone, cheers, it's coffee time. Speaking of the time, it's a little bit after 12.30 in the afternoon. The conditions have not changed. The temperature has not gone down. And in fact, I just checked the forecast and now they're calling for no snow. It went from two feet to ice to nothing. <laughs> I love it. What do you do, you know what I mean? You have fun. That's it. You go out for a trip, you prepare, you do your best. I carried quite a bit of weight with me on this trip, but that's okay. When you head out on a trip, it's all about being prepared for everything, being self-reliant. It easily could have snowed two feet with this storm, and I would have been glad I had that shovel. But it didn't. That's how it goes. On to the next. Cheers. I'm going to have this bar, finish up this coffee, and I'm going to then break everything down and head out of here. I tell you what though, yeah, it was disappointing that the forecast was wrong, but I've had a ton of fun. The conditions really have been absolutely awful. <laughs> super, super windy, but the truth is I've stayed warm, I've stayed comfortable. Inside of the tent was perfect, super warm and cozy last night. Heelerberg, fourth season tent all the way. It's a great shelter. Talking about how this forecast was so wrong and the fact that we didn't receive the snow they were calling for, I will tell you all a story about a time where they weren't calling for snow and we received a ton. So back in the 80s, I would say maybe 84, 85, I was pretty little at the time. My mom was out of town and my dad did construction so he worked all day and whatnot. So like that morning they were calling for like rain basically all day long, but the temperature was low, like around 35, 36 degrees, something like that. The storm comes in and it doesn't start as rain, it starts as snow and it continues as snow all day, one foot. The next day, another foot. <laughs> the next day, another foot. That was a really good storm. Now, of course, it failed in comparison to the great storm of 1993. That was the storm of the century, the 93 blizzard that we had up here. Let me tell you all a little bit about the storm of 93. It was known as the great blizzard of 93, the no-name storm or the 93 Superstorm. This storm was massive. It stretched from Canada all the way down to Honduras. And with this storm, 
Winds of over 100 miles per hour were recorded. 56 inches of snow dropped up here in the mountains. In total, 318 people died and it cost $5.5 billion worth of damage. Up here in the mountains, we had 15 foot snow drifts that basically brought the entire area to a standstill. Martial law was declared in the area and the National Guard came in with Black Hawk helicopters so they could drop food and medicine. They were also dropping food for cattle and livestock. Once martial law was discontinued and we were able to go to town, I remember driving past the mall. So imagine this big parking lot. They took down all of the lights and they made landing pads for those Black Hawk helicopters. All right, everyone, the coffee's done, food done, the stove's out. I'm going to take my time, break everything down here while trying to stay as dry as possible. That is the plan, folks. It's time to get out of here. There's no point really to stay. Plus, I'm out of water and it's not raining hard enough to collect any, so. Well, it is what it is. It feels like a good time to leave, folks. You know what's funny? The high temperature tomorrow is 50. <laughs> All right. It's a heavy drizzle right now. All in all, it's not that bad. But the camera is getting soaked. Because of that, everyone, I'm going to say goodbye. I will see you next week with the next adventure. Thank you all very much for joining me on this trip. Unfortunately, it wasn't the big storm that we wanted, but that's how it goes. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel. If you want to support the Outdoor Gear Review, you could do so Patreon, YouTube, you can join the wolf pack. Folks, take care, be well, strength and honor.